So everyone should know by now that FL Studio just dropped FL Studio version 20.6 not too long ago, and they've added this advanced fill option. And to access it, you just right click on your channel, select advanced fill below these fill each two, four, and eight steps. Previously, that's all we had before. But now with this advanced fill option, we have three different fill types where we could fill every whatever interval. We can manually fill in intervals. You could do that just by clicking in any of these slots right here and then right click to delete them. But then you have this Euclidean, but then you have this Euclidean option. And this is what I'm most excited about. I find that the manual option really isn't better than just using FL Studio Piano Roll or just using the step sequencer itself. So I personally would ignore that. The fill every option is much more useful than the manual option. But in reality, the fill every option is pretty limited because once you get past a certain number, like eight, if you're in a 16 step sequence, these patterns get incredibly basic, almost useless. So it's really these lower numbers like three where this becomes useful. Again, I find that the step sequencer itself and the piano roll are a lot more useful than both the manual and fill every option. But this Euclidean option is where things get interesting. This is actually adding additional steps with whatever number you include here. So right now I'm on one, so it added one step. Two adds two, three, and so on and so forth. But depending on your step sequence, there's what I call magic numbers that really work excellent for creating hi-hat rhythms and percussion rhythms. So here's the formula that I'm finding. So let's say you have an eight step sequence, which is really rare. I think most of you are using at least 16. So here we have one, obviously. Here we have two, three, four, and you'll find that all of these work really well. Five, five, six, all the way up to eight. And the same case goes for the 16 step length with our step counts. All these sound really great. Here's five. Six. Seven. Sounds very tribal and it definitely brings out a certain groove that would take you quite a while to input these manually. Not to mention to cycle through a lot of different options manually. But things start to get tricky when you go from 16 to 32 and 32 is a four bar sequence. 16 steps is two bars. Each bar has eight steps. So 32 steps, that would equal four bars. So I think a lot of you are working with 32, but something curious happens when you start using all the different numbers. So I'm going to throw a snare in here so that we can keep track of the rhythm. So we're on 32 steps and let's go to a random number 17. So it sounds a little funky go to 19 21 23 As soon as you get, get up to 32 steps, once you start using odd numbers, you kind of lose that groove and that feel that most people are used to. Here's 15. You can hear how it just kind of loses its groove. It kind of goes off kilter a little bit. But as soon as we go to an even number, let's just go one above at 16. It makes sense. Go to 14 below it.
But then when you go to 64 steps, things switch up yet again. So instead of increments of two, you definitely want to use increments of four instead. So while I know a lot of you work with 32 steps, I think the majority of people that watch this channel work with 64 steps. And that's because most of you are using halftime. And the way that you would uh, decide whether or not you're using halftime, if your snare is on this step right here, the ninth step of the step sequencer, likely you're using halftime. If your snare is right here, then you're probably using normal time and you're using slower tempos like 70 instead of 140. You'll notice that increments of four make a lot more sense than anything else. So let's just listen to this increment of 15 right here. It just sounds sloppy and all over the place, but as soon as we go up to 16, which is an increment of four, it makes sense again. And that continues. So let's go up to 20. That has a nice groove to it. And then you might be thinking, well, as long as the number is even, you should be good. But here's 22. But again, that would work really well with polyrhythms and things like that. But you'll find, once again, increments of four just sound better. Twenty six. It just gets a little all over the place. It is usable, but it's not going to sound as good as the increments of four when you're on 64 steps. So here's 28. The grooves and the rhythms just make a whole lot more sense. So I actually work with eight bars inside of halftime. So if we, so if we right click, switch to eight bars, that's 128 steps. And the reason that I do that is because all my melodies and chord progressions, those are eight bar sequences. And that just gives me a lot more variation within my loop. So that's a tip that can help some of you guys out that sound a little too repetitive. Instead of working with four bar loops inside of halftime, work with eight bar loops inside of halftime. So that's 128 steps. But when you're using 128 steps and Euclidean, definitely switch over to increments of eight instead of increments of four. So here's 23, which is not an increment of four. You can hear that it just gets really sloppy really fast. And again, let's use an even number so that you know it's specifically increments that, of eight that are working here. So here's 30. Once again, it just goes all over the place. So let's just go up by two and then we're back on increments of eight. So it makes sense again. Let's go with a really high number. Here's 56. So it has a nice little groove to it. So let's go in and make a bunch of rhythms with some of my percussion here. So let's start with the hi-hats, advanced fill. One thing that I should note with 128, if you, if you go below eight, then an increment of four and increments of two actually do make sense as well. So we'll just go with the basic two, two step on 128. Hit accept. Let's go with this tambourine. We'll leave that on 16. Let's go to the shaker. Let's go with four. Turn this up. And then one thing that you could always do, you could hit shift and control, hold those down at the same time, and then use your left and right arrows on your keyboard 
to move these around. So let's just move this into the middle here. Let's go to 16. And let's shift this over as well. And then I'm going to clone this and I'm going to add another perk. It's from my in-flight music 2020 drum kit. Let's go to advanced fill again, Clidian, and let's use a much higher number. So here's 32. And then I'm going to clone my hi-hats and we're going to add an additional hi-hat. Go with this hippie hi-hat from my kit. So here's 56. I totally forgot to say that you could play these at the same time. So playing this and you could solo it, but that definitely helps you figure out what groove you're looking for. Let's go to Euclidean again. Let's go with that. Let's turn this down a little bit. I'm going to increase the out knob. Hit play. I think a lower number for a shaker makes sense. And let's shift this over, control shift and right arrow. So yeah, you can see it's just a lot faster to make these grooves and patterns inside of the step sequencer with that Euclidean mode. So according to YouTube, the next video you should watch is here on your left. And if you like this video, you should definitely check out the video on your right as well. I make new videos every week, so remember to turn on notifications so that you are notified every time I drop a new video. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.